Moscow has pressed the West to lift sanctions against Russia over the war in Ukraine, seeking to shift the blame for a growing food crisis worsened by Kyiv's inability to ship millions of tons of grain and other agricultural products because of the conflict. A senior UN official is due to visit Moscow in the coming days to discuss reviving fertilizer exports. Russia's UN ambassador, Vasily Nabenzia, has stressed that the talks were not linked to a resumption of Ukrainian grain shipments. Since Russia invaded Ukraine February 24, Ukrainian grain shipments from its Black Sea ports have stalled. Moscow says the chilling effect of Western sanctions imposed on Russia over the war have disrupted its fertilizer and grain exports. Here's more in this report. Time is running out to export some 22 million tons of grain out of Ukraine before the country's new harvest as Russian forces continue to block the country's Black Sea ports. According to Ukrainian officials, Ukraine's Black Sea ports have been blocked since Russia sent thousands of troops into Ukraine on February 24th and millions of tons of grain remain stuck in silos in the country. Crop is important, but crop is a part of a big mechanism. Ukraine is really one of the best, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say the best, but one of the big uh, agricultural countries in the world. And, uh, and uh, it's not just about crop, it's about all the rest, which is making the food security and the livelihood of all the Ukrainians. And this is also, we have to, to think about it, because if the Ukrainians have a good livelihood and a good capacity, they're going to continue to produce also. You know, everything has been, uh, been linked. But with the ports of Odessa, Chernomorsk and others cut off from the world by Russian warships, the grain supply can only travel on Ukraine's congested land routes that are far less efficient. Odessa has to be reopened and we need to have an agreement uh, to have it reopened. Um, this diplomatic level has to be discussed with people who can solve the situation and then we need to have an agreement. As FAO, our Director General also remind that. Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dimitrov Kuleba has accused Russia of trying to blackmail the international community by raising the possibility of unblocking Ukraine's Black Sea port in return for a relaxation of sanctions against Russia. I think that there won't be any, any one uh, destination for Ukrainian corn or any other products where we should like, uh, focus completely. I think we should just segregate and, and, and multi, like, multiply our uh, optionality and just send it to Polish, send it to uh, Germany send it to uh, Kwanpi, the port, and, and certainly to Romania. It's what we should do. It's, 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 no, it's not like an ideal situation where we should like make a, a focus. In, even Germany, that's a, that's a really good opportunity. Like, say, Hamburg, or Stockport are uh, like quite effective. European Commission chief and other leaders have called for talks with Moscow on unlocking with exports trapped in Ukraine by the sea blockade. And saying what the grain shipments at the Black Sea, one more reaction is coming from British Foreign Minister Liz Truss, who accused Russian President of holding the world to ransom over food, responding to a question about whether she supported lifting sanctions in exchange for grain exports from Ukraine. Just yesterday, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Andrei Rudenko was cited by the Interfax News Agency as saying that Moscow was ready to provide a humanitarian corridor for vessels carrying food to leave Ukraine in return for the lifting of of some sanctions. Is a this country's tragic history is a reminder of what happens when we fail to stand up to aggression. Things get worse, they don't get better. The Srebrenica genocide, the siege of Sarajevo were just two of the atro atrocities that left us appalled. We said never again that we would never let this happen in Europe again. And yet what we are seeing today in this country are signs of Russian interference which risk plunging us back into those dark days. This must be stopped and the United Kingdom stands with our friends in this country to stop this from happening. Today the United Kingdom is announcing a new investment package into the Western Balkans. This is about providing honest, reliable investment into industries like energy and infrastructure as an alternative to strings-attached investments, which leads to malign influence. 
We're aiming to mobilise $100 million of UK-backed investment into the Western Balkans by 2025. This is in addition to the export support that we're supplying through UK export finance. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian military says Russia has the military advantage in the fight in the eastern Luhansk region, but they are doing everything they can. Meanwhile, Serhi Hedai, the governor of Luhansk, acknowledged that Russian forces were retreating before Moscow's offensive in the eastern Donbass region beset the last road out of Lishansk and Severodonetsk remain outside Russian control. The VOA's Anna Chenikova joins us now from Kiev for more on the situation. Hello, Anna. Uh, let's begin with uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky warning that Moscow is seeking to destroy the industrial Donbass region um, where it has, you know, focused its attacks. How bad are things there? Hello, good evening. Well, um, this is quite true. And uh, unfortunately, we can clearly see that um, industrial areas and um, civilian, especially private areas, are under the, mo the most of the attacks. And uh, to be honest, uh, if, if to look at the map and if to look at all the cities which are um, on the way of Russian troops, uh, we can clearly see, and you, uh, both from the intelligence information and also from the um, satellites, that basically all these cities are just, you know, landed. So it's just nothing left and it's only land and uh, and fire in there and unfortunately this is a tactic that russian forces are using in order to reach uh their goal as uh, as what was announced by russian ministry of defense minister of defense that they have to get to the administrative borders of luhansk and donetsk regions uh as uh, and we can see that this is quite true that they do everything but unfortunately they do not um, you know, uh, take over cities, they just take over ruins. And um, this is exactly what Mr. Zelensky is also pointed out uh, at, and uh, also Ukrainian government and military officials. Um, so um, the main, and unfortunately also the main attacks are mostly at the civilian infrastructure into um, you know, logistic infrastructure in particular, and uh, um, a lot of civilians are dying. And uh, also what we know from the, um, from the official sources that as of today, and of course um, this would, uh, uh, and of course this would change and probably worsen, uh, we have at least twice more civilians dead than military. Um, so this is probably the result of these tactics by Russian forces. Indeed, really sad reports coming from there. But um, if one were to ask who controls what in Ukraine, specifically the Donbass region, what answer would you give? Uh, because we're hearing reports, uh, several analysts who are saying that it appears Russia is winning that war. Um, well, it's difficult to say, you know, either winning or keeping territories for now. If we look at the situation, we see that for the moment, definitely most of Luhansk and Donetsk region are under the Russian control. Um, as we know from the latest report, uh, Luhansk, only 10%, like around 10%, 7 to 10% of uh, Luhansk region is under Ukrainian control. But again, we have to also understand and look deeper into that because um, these areas are partly occupied since 2014 and um, and definitely this was you know a kind of a front line for all these eight years and Ukrainian forces are getting also their position so it's not just that they are leaving and just run away or you know uh, just try to avoid these territories now they are also moving to other positions and they are staying still there as um, the, um, as our main military uh, chief said today. And um, uh, basically, this is just, you know, the positioning. And of course, Ukrainian uh, military is waiting for the West support and for the equipment, which is, uh, which should come soon. Uh, I mean, sooner or later anyway. So there are expectations that in the late summer, 
it might be uh, the counter attack uh, and counter attack of course probably of, we, we, we cannot say for sure and we are not military uh, experts on in the field but uh, well probably it would start from donbas so uh, for the moment we can say that most of the donbas region is under russian uh, control um, if they are winning or not well it's too early to say all right, Anna, and, and we're also reading, you know, about 8,000 Ukrainian uh, prisoners of war, we understand, are being held in the um, uh, self-proclaimed Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republic. Uh, this is uh, from a Russian-backed separatist. But then uh, the Russian Defense Ministry is saying that uh, it is promising a sort of safe corridor to allow uh, foreign ships to leave the Black Sea ports, um, you know, with another corridor for ships to leave Mariupol. Um, do you see them leaving up to this promise, considering the threat to, to food uh, insecurity around the world? Uh, we know and we, uh, we hear the report that uh, reportedly Turkey is, uh, is having talks uh, with Russia and Ukraine. We don't have any official confirmations from the Ukrainian authorities so far. Uh, this is true that we also heard from Russian side that they might demine uh, Mariupol port to involve it in that. But again, for the moment, it's definitely not, not clear uh, if this could happen. Uh, if this is true and if these reports are correct that Turkey is trying to negotiate this kind of corridors, this of course would be a great deal. But again, um, it's a question of what negotiation is about. So what should Ukraine give away or not give away? So, I mean, we don't know the terms of these negotiations and there are no official comments. In terms of Mariupol, um, well, of course, Ukraine um, has not particular information on what's happening in there. Intelligence has, but again, we don't know uh, much from there. But what we know is that Mariupol port was very much uh, covered with mines. So um, it's really difficult to say how fast could Russian forces demine this area. We know that a couple of days ago there were reports that um, during the demining uh, procedure at the Azov style and the, at the sea line, um, four Russian soldiers were, uh, were injured very badly because of the, of the mines. So Again, this is just, you know, a question of time, and uh, I just suggest we wait for the official comments from the Ukrainian government. And Anna, on the question of territory, the New York Times editorial board said earlier this month that a negotiated peace might require Kyiv to make some hard decisions, uh, given that the, uh, you know, military victory, or rather it says decisive military victory, was not realistic. Um, what does, how does President Zelensky feel about this? Um, very negative. Um, you know, um, I think that um, President Zelensky is very united here with Ukrainian society. Uh, if we look back three months ago, uh, no one would expect that Ukraine would survive three days of this, in the, into this war. Now we are more than three months into this war, and it's definitely, you know, quite not correct to say that Ukraine cannot win. Uh, even more, uh, we understand, I think everyone understands that the battle is happening on the territory of Ukraine by the Ukrainian army. But uh, of course, it wouldn't be possible without uh, Western support, US support, uh, European support. Uh, so basically, mm, le well, if Ukraine doesn't win, uh, well, then all these partners doesn't win as well. And this what this is just this huge victory of Russia. I don't think it's really a great, you know, point of view and, you know, thing of, well, positioning of this situation because uh, we want to talk, and I think that the whole world is one uh, wants to talk about the peace, uh, not illusion of compromise, not illusion of peace. Uh, if the world would give Russia the opportunity to win here, to win now, then well, we'll get. Uh, a lot of other problems will get, you know, this kind of a principle of impunity that uh, aggressor can actually go forward, go on, go further. And um, definitely this is not going to stop other uh, leaders, uh, like either next leaders in Russia when Putin is gone and 
there will be someone else, uh, this person will probably continue the same uh, way of, you know, behavior because, well, no one did anything like it was okay. Uh, also, we should also consider that it's not only about Ukraine here. It's uh, basically, well, it's big time about the whole world because there are not only, there are quite, you know, a lot of countries around the world that consider probably, uh, you know, starting war or starting aggression uh, to the neighboring country. Let's, I don't know, let's take Taiwan, for example, in China, you know. So this is very, um, well, it's, I think that everyone should be very careful when putting these things uh, things this way, because under Ukrainian constitution, Ukraine uh, Ukraine's integrity and territorial integrity in particular is not under the question. So Ukraine would never say, well, okay, let us give this territory or that territory and create peace, because, well, peace is not created this way. And this is the position of Ukrainian government and President Zelensky. And also he mentioned this in Davos that everyone should be very careful because uh, here and now in Ukraine, unfortunately, with Ukrainian blood and Ukrainian, the life of Ukrainians, uh, we are creating, well, a new security in the world, a new security system. And everyone probably is starting to accept this because we can see that, unfortunately, in the 21st century, Europe is under the war again. Mm, so definitely, uh, definitely, this article by New York Times created a lot of discussions here inside the country, and I know also abroad. But uh, I think that everyone should be very careful and should go, you know, sh should just take decision for peace, but not illusion of peace. All right. So uh, finally, Anna, just give us a position of Ukraine, President Zelensky uh, and the Ukrainian people on this, uh, because we also heard this at the Davos meeting that Ukraine should let Russia keep Crimea, which it annexed in 2014. Ukrainian position uh, is very clear uh, and Ukrainian position was uh, presented by the president of Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky. Uh, the complete victory for Ukraine and victory as itself would be the returning of all the territories. So uh, we are not talking only about territories before the, 21st, uh, the, the 24th of February. We're talking about all, uh, all the territory which is under, uh, which is recognized uh, by the international society and under all the documents and by, the, by Russia as well. Uh, as integrity territory of Ukraine. So um, Ukrainian government, Ukrainian president, uh, everyone, uh, and Ukrainian society, for sure, uh, is not ready to give away territories. And uh, we just had recent, um, uh, recent, um, uh, how do you call it, the um, well, questionnaire for, for, the, for the society. And we have 82% of Ukrainians who are not supporting giving up territories, and this is a huge amount. And uh, well, this is probably would be the, the the answer because for Ukraine it's important to give all the all the territories back. Ukraine doesn't want anything additional, just the territories which are recognized by the international society. All right, Anna, we always appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Do continue to stay safe. We've been talking to VOA's Anna Chernikova live from Kiev. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.